you guys remember a little over a month ago uh from today when i'm recording this that manas hit the world by storm i mean it honestly was just everywhere and very few people had access to it and honestly i was really hyped by it so much so that i probably had a bit of fomo because i couldn't get access to it i tried but i just couldn't and i had a lot of time to think about manis i do think what manis is doing is very very interesting but i also think it's incredibly overhyped um it is not a second deep seek moment in any way whatsoever but it is a good tool it is it is good so i started trying to research in the web a little bit around what people are using it for and you see people doing like data analysis and they're doing comparisons with chat gpt and I could totally see this, right? Because this is something that Manus would do a much better job at than a single chat GPT prompt. But on the other hand, I'd probably need to test it with some other models as well, because I feel like I could probably get similar results to what he's talking about here. And then this person says they got access to, to Manus and they say it's smart. They wanted to compile a list of directory websites in a major niche along with examples. And they go on to say, but Manus is quite accurate. And as good as it gets, not bad to be, t to be honest. And we go on. This person says it's mind blowing. I asked it to tell me the best health insurance to buy. They can see what uh, Manus is doing. They can open VS Code and do it themselves. And this is the essence of what AI agents are supposed to be. And I can kind of agree with that. Like when we want AI agents to do something, we want it to just do the job. Now, this person, you know, talks about how good Manus is as well. Wow, this is exactly what AI is meant to do. Execute task seamlessly with minimum to no human input. So I did finally get access to Manas and I've been playing with it for a little bit now and it is impressive. I don't know exactly if I would pay for it though. And I hate saying that because I do think it's a good product. I just don't think it's for me. I think a lot of the things that it does uh, are just things that I would do in other AI tools currently. And I just don't have a reason to pay for another subscription, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't. So the way the credits work is you pay a monthly fee of $39 a month. You get 3,900 credits per month and you get about a penny a credit. It's a penny. No, it is exactly a penny a credit where you pay $199 a month and get 19,900 credits. Now I have a job that looks like it just finished, which I'll, I'll show you the results of these here in a minute. And I'm at 249 credits. I did get 1,100 credits total because I got 100 for leaving a review of one of my jobs that I did. So if you think about it, the job credit usage is kind of variable. So when you kick something off, I don't actually know if I could run another one and what would happen if I ran out of credits like 80% of the way through. It'd probably tell me to top up or something. Or maybe it goes negative, I don't know. But regardless, if we look at some of the examples here, you get everything from planning an itinerary to analyzing a stock to building an interactive course analyzing insurance. I really like the data analysis ones. These are, this would be the case that I probably would use it the most potentially. They have the life category. I like some of the education stuff, productivity stuff, and then the W2F category. And I've went through and I've probably looked at 80 to 90% of these and did a replay of them. Some of these templates or demos rather, Honestly, I do not think they should be showing on their website because I just don't think they do a good job showing off what Manus can do. Let me just show you this one real quick. You give, you put in a resume and you want a minimalist business card. Skip to the results. Like, look what you get. That's, that's not anything special. Heck, I could make that uh, in any sort of image generation software. So anyway, it just, I think they should probably do a little bit better job showcasing better things um, that are created here. But you know, that's not my, not my job to say that. But let me show you what I did first. So one of the first things I wanted to do is have it research e-commerce agencies. So the business I run, we, we sell into agencies and brands. And I was like, all right, let's research the top e-commerce agencies and give me information about it. Give me information about, you can see the content I put in, you know, who founded it, how many brands do they work with? client reviews and so on, uh, where they're located. And I told it to just make me a website that I can go and view that on. 
Now, I did the same exact thing on Grok, and I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. But what I really like about this is the idea that you can publish it to a, a, a man of space and see the website for it. So it came up with the M's, Think Social Media, Offset Marketing, Defy Creativity or Creative, Affirmative Media. But there are problems with this. So some of these websites just do not work. Uh, so that one works. That one doesn't look like it's going to work. And none of these have additional details. So it made this second page and I've clicked every one of these just to see if it did. And it gave me nothing in there, which is super unfortunate. Looking at Grok, what I ended up doing is that same exact prompt. Now it didn't actually make me a website. I, I, I did ask it to make a website, but it did not. But it did do a bunch of research on it. And it came up, if you look at this, the M's, Think Social, Offset Marketing, Defy Creative. Part of me thinks they found the same website that they ended up pulling them from. Uh, Grok did actually do a better job. All five of these links work, which is great. And then when it couldn't find a link, it said information not available. So for what I did here, I think I could probably replicate that in a deep research type functionality. Um, then we know we talked a little bit about Llama 4 recently. I said, go ahead and research Llama 4, do sentiment analysis, benchmark results, and you know, just some other information around how good it is. And it generated these four files. So I got my sentiment analysis, both positive and negative. Technical specification is my favorite one because it did a really good job pulling the accurate information for Scout and Maverick and Behemoth. And then it did kind of a summary of everything uh, about the release. And then they talk a little bit about the benchmarks. Benchmarks are wrong here because there's just wrong information on the on the internet currently, which it's not the model's fault. It's not Manus's fault. It's not the AI's fault here. But yeah, I, I think this is kind of neat. And I probably would use something like this, to be honest, if I had a subscription to Manus, because I do love the idea of just being able to kick off these jobs and let it run and do a bunch of analysis for me. Um, heck, I could take any particular topic in the world of AI and have it run off and do a bunch of research for me. Uh, if we look at Google Trends, I like I like looking at this. Uh, this is uh, not bad, right? You got that spike when it was just all over the freaking internet and everybody was talking about Manus. And now we've got a pretty steady line here, pretty consistent trend traffic. So, you know, you can kind of see why people are saying this was the deep seek moment again, like the second deep seek moment. Because these other ones are just kind of steady, but this one really did spike a lot of interest here. So now I my final job is finished. And this is the flight simulator. This is one that I like to test a lot when I'm using agentic coding tools. In fact, I just tested one in Rue code in my new micromanager uh orchestrator i've got with like the intern junior mid-level senior designer and i got a kind of functioning version um, so i'm really curious how this is actually going to work here right, so let's go ahead and open up the flight simulator so it's loading assets and it says game over in the background i don't think this is going to work dang it let's open for something a little bit cooler there to show you what i built with my own ai uh, I've got this little guy, which I at least have an airplane. I try to figure out, I think it's backwards, but this could be its little propeller. <laughs> I don't know. I need to kind of iterate on this, but I did all of this with my micromanager of system that I built that actually has senior designer, mid-level junior and intern that it goes through. And I was pretty impressed with how it worked. Um, and kind of spanned out the task properly. You could you saw it go to the junior level or to the mid level, and that was kind of neat. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, Manus just outright failed on that. So what stinks about this in this case is that I've pretty much lost those credits because I don't think iterating on this is going to go super well. So yeah, I think that's going to about wrap this one up. I, I'm so happy I got a chance to look at Manus. Definitely a lot of FOMO around it early on. Now I'm at a point now where I'm like, this is super cool tech. I'm happy that there's a lot of people liking it. I don't typically have a use case for it right now. That's okay, but it's still really neat. I'm impressed with what they built. I love the whole um, the whole ecosystem that they have there with being able to deploy a website to a space. 
I think the pricing is fair, but I do not like the credit system. Uh, but the main thing I don't like about the credit system is the fact that there's no communication of what's actually happening. So if they had the task running through, it'd be ideal if at the end it just said, hey, this job used 295 credits or particular things that happened. Some sort of indication of what you spent rather than just kind of happen to do that math yourself. Not a big deal because they're still early and it's just going to keep getting better. Um, you know, they're going to plug in better models. They're going to build better tools. They're going to add a bunch of neat stuff in there. So impressive job, guys, on the team at Manus. Like, you guys did awesome. I do think it was a little bit overhyped, but that's a good thing. It helped get them the attention and, and make, hopefully, some good traction. I will be curious to see how many people like it enough or can use it enough to justify paying that $39 a month or even more the $199 a month. I uh, hope, for their sake, it does incredibly well. And I'm curious to know what all of you guys think. Are any of you paying for Manus? Would you pay for Manus? I mean, do you agree with my take on it? Like, it's cool tech, but, you know, not something that I would necessarily need to actually pay for. Because uh, I just don't have the use cases for it. Especially because I don't think it's that great at writing code, just to be totally honest with you. I don't think it's built to write code. But yeah, um, let me know your thoughts below. And if this was interesting to you, please give me a like and subscribe. Until next time, everyone, peace out.